Hi friends, hope you are doing well. So today I'm going to make a video about how to get the assistant professor position at Indian Institute of Technologies and similar bodies. For example, the NITs, the triple ITs and so on. So let's look at some of the things which are specified in a typical ad and then what you need to do to prepare for getting these kind of positions. So the number one thing which is going to be specified is that PhD is required. And this is of course a must. You need a PhD to get into the assistant professor position at any of these universities. So make sure that you get your PhD and I have put out several videos on my channel about how to get PhD, how to do the various things required during the PhD process, how to avoid the PhD blues and so on. Now the next thing you will find is that it will be mentioned that postdoctoral experience after the PhD is desirable. Now here the keyword is going to be desirable because again this is something which the universities would like to have but it's not something which the universities always get. So again here there is a question of supply and demand. How many people are actually applying to these institutes whereas how many people are going to get the job. Now in most cases what is specified is that you need up to three years of postdoctoral experience to really get this assistant professor job. Now again, there are some loopholes here. There are some exceptional candidates who may actually get this job without this experience. So it of course depends on the number and quality of papers you have in your PhD and so on. Now, it's also possible that there are some fields where the fields are very hot. PhD is not something which is followed by a postdoc in these fields. For example, if you are looking to hire somebody in machine learning and computer science, you may not get a person who has three year postdoc experience. Same thing maybe in cybersecurity, in bioinformatics, in biotechnology, in genomics research and some of these disciplines where actually people often go off and work in the companies as research scientists and so on. So again, keep this in mind. This is of course dependent on your field. If you are in the sciences, the postdoctoral requirement is more likely to be almost mandatory. However, if you are in the engineering field, there is a lot of leeway. It totally depends on your department, the institution, the supply and demand situation and so on. So don't take this requirement too seriously. But of course, if you are somebody doing a PhD and has a lot of time in their hands, that is they have time till they reach age 35, then you can think of spending a few years as postdoc. And of course, that's certainly going to strengthen your CV and it's also going to strengthen your research record in most cases. So let's look at number three requirement and this is that you must demonstrate research excellence. So here the word is demonstrated and demonstrating research excellence typically requires that you publish some journal or conference papers out of your PhD thesis. Now, this is certainly a requirement in most cases, but do not get too obsessed by the number factor here because what often happens is that only numbers are not going to get you in. In fact, it's quality which is going to matter more over quantity. And of course, if somebody has both quality and quantity, this person will stand out very well, but that's something which is there even in exceptional people, only in exceptional people. So keep that in mind. Now, typically what they are expecting is two to five papers in good journals. And the better the quality of the journals, the lower the threshold here. So if you have papers in very top journals in your field, even two papers can get you a faculty positions. Then of course, some people get obsessed with impact factor here, but I would tell you that most of the professors do not bother so much about the impact factor of the journal. If they have been working in an area in the department for many years, maybe a couple of decades, they already know which are the top journals in the field. And sometimes these journals are published by professional societies such as the IEEE, the AIAA, ACM and so on. Sometimes these are actually brought out by top publishers. So you may have journal of fluid mechanics or you may have mechanics of physics and solids and many such journals. So again, the people in the field know the top journals in the field, so they are not going to bother going and checking the impact factor and so on. However, if you do have some papers in very high impact factor journals such as Nature, Science or Cell, that is certainly going to make a very strong case with the selection committee, especially with the dean and the director or the divisional chairman of the institute. Now let's look at number four 
and this is research pedigree now research pedigree is essentially a very complex thing but it's something which is judged by the university people all the time now research pedigree consists of many things it consists of your degrees in terms of your bachelor's degree your master's degree and your phd degree and where these degrees are from now why this becomes important is because if you are given the task of teaching bachelor's degree students which is the predominant task at most such institutions then you should have been a good bachelor's degree student and you should have done your bachelor's degree in the same discipline in which you are applying for this faculty position so very often let's think about a field such as mechanical engineering if you are going to teach mechanics in this particular department then they are going to go back in your history and look at how you were in terms of a student in your mechanical engineering btech program how did you do in your mechanical or mechanics type of courses and so on so that becomes important now generally there is a preference for people who have gone to high rank university but this is not always the case but generally it always helps to have a btech degree an mtech degree and a phd degree or any of these degrees from higher rank universities so that will certainly get you into the gate but it may not necessarily get you the final job so i would say what matters most is name of the phd university second name of the masters university third name of the bachelor's degree university all these are important now there is a case where the name of the supervisor can actually be more important than the name of the university and this is if your phd supervisor is a world renowned person now he may be a phd supervisor at a more normal university but since the people know that he is a very renowned person they are going to consider this very strongly so this is also a part of the research pedigree so it's not only which university you have graduated from who was your phd supervisor and if you have done a post doc then that's also going to further add to your research pedigree where did you do your post doc who was your post doc supervisor so remember many of the people in the department would be knowing the various top professors around the world or even the main professors around the world working in a certain area so be sure that they will know whoever your postdoc and phd supervisor were so make sure that you improve your research pedigree if you are doing phd somewhere and you feel you can go somewhere else and do a postdoc at a top university maybe go for one of the foundation postdocs such as the hubbard postdoc or the jsps postdoc then try to do that a stint in a foreign country is certainly going to further buttress your research pedigree now number 5 is little controversial point that this can sometime help some candidates at least get their feet in the door and this is the contacts you have in the university and the institution and these contacts may be developed when you were doing your btech degree there mtech degree there phd degree there and if you were a good student you were performing well then these contacts can help you now sometime there are people who have done a period of internship at one of these institutions and professors also remember these students and so some professor may say this guy was in my lab for 3 months in summer he was very good during his bachelor's degree time and so all these factors do help the case because in many cases people are trying to know if the student is a good person also so some of these things are not totally revealed by the cv the different application materials and so on so that certainly going to matter now of course contacts also come in the form of letters of references so whatever reference letters you get that plays a very important role if your reference letters are again from people at top universities your reference letters are from people who are very well renowned in the field that's going to suddenly add a lot of weight to your your application make sure that you know people beside your phd supervisor because it's taken for granted that phd supervisor will write a good recommendation for you but then if other people write a good recommendation for you that helps a lot so here one of the persons is whoever is reviewing your phd thesis so this is certainly a person who may be inside your country it may be a foreign referee all these people are always willing to write a letter for you and if your phd was good they are going to give you a strong letter here post doc also helps here because you get a letter from your post doc supervisor and you may get a letter from somebody else at that university also with whom you work so when you are doing a post doc you can not only work with one supervisor but you can also write joint papers with somebody else also so all these are helpful in 
bringing out your contact list to a higher level so that's something to keep in mind so these were the main factors but then i will tell you something else which is often required now during the interview process and so on they often ask you very fundamental and basic questions and in, in fact sometimes they may ask you to teach a class so essentially they're trying to figure out how you are able to manage the ug students because ug students often don't know a lot and so sometimes people who have done a phd may presume that they have a very high level of preparation and this is not always so so whenever you are teaching ug student you have to be ready to come to their level to explain very basic things to them and if you show some level of arrogance at that point that you do not want to mix with the ug students you do not want to come down to their level then that's certainly going to have a negative impact on your case so these were some of the points i had for you about how to become a professor at one of the indian technology institutions i hope this video is useful to you and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then